Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everybody connected from different parts of the world. Welcome everybody to this ICDC Summit, Direct Current, your next energy. My name is Vivian Montoya, and I am the Smart Power Division Global Communications Manager, and I will be with you during these two days to bring you through a fantastic journey on Direct Current World. Although more than a century has passed since the heated dispute between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, known as the War of Currents, we still have the debate to decide if it's better to use that current DC or if it's better to use the now widespread alternating current AC. Even if the first power plants were in DC, as the famous example of Santa Radegonda in the city center of Milan, AC started replacing DC in power generation, transmission and distribution. The main reason for that is because AC was more easily transformed between different voltage levels and transmitted over long distances. These conversions allowed high voltage, low current power distribution that minimizes losses and enables thermal central power plants to be installed far from the cities, but with enough scale to be maximally cost effectively. But the urgency to develop modern static converters support the growing use of renewables, decentralized energy sources, and to provide a wide type of loads operating directly in direct current, was possible to reopen the option for direct current solutions to no longer be relegated to some specific applications, but to be used more generally for electric power distribution. In line with this, direct current will give us the opportunity to reach two fundamental targets. First, a higher efficiency using energy resources and a consequent reduced impact on environmental and CO2 emissions. And second, and not less important, give access to electricity to worldwide population, especially in rural areas. In this case, a simple DC microgrid represents the only possibility to electrify them. The fundamental impact on ecology and relevant social aspects increases the uses of DC in power distribution. As you can see, there are so many topics to discuss around DC solutions. All are relevant and actual, but being realistic, we have no expectation to conclude the conversations about direct current solutions in only two days is not possible. But our idea is to start today a journey across direct current involving experts, professionals and gurus able to inform and update you about DC evolution. Our aim is to create a network that starts today and will continue being interactive for the upcoming weeks and months. 
ICGC Summit will remain as a live platform to interact, discuss, get in contact with our experts, propose new topics, and find out more and more contents and many live sessions, touching different topics and going in depth of a specific argument if needed. Today and tomorrow, we will start to discuss about trends, applications, and roles. As a trend, we will see what is the future of DC systems, the expected voltage branch, and DC protection strategy. We will also review the standards evolution related. In terms of applications, we will go through buildings, EDCI, battery energy storage systems, microgrids in commercial building and lighting. And as a product, we will review circuit breakers, conversion systems, contactors and switches like the Emax 2 ms and new OTDC for 1000 500 BDC. Although surely some topics will be missed, our idea is to also prioritize the tidied current conversation from now on. To build this complete program and make the ICDC Summit real, we are not alone. We are glad to have contribution from ABB and external experts trying to have a wide and open point of view about that current status and evolution. Many contributions are coming also from different countries like Italy, Switzerland, Germany, Finland, Sweden, Netherlands, India, China, and US. That is why I would like to thank all the contributors that have found the time and the resources to enrich this ICDC Summit. Thanks again, it's fully appreciated. Another important remark I would like to do is about COVID-19 regulations. During the presentation of all the sessions and even during the event, all the COVID-19 protocols have been strictly followed and observed. Now, let's start this exciting journey through DC solutions. Come with me to the Experience Center. In these two days, we will have 10 sessions, five sessions today and five sessions tomorrow. So let me share with you today's program. We will start with the introductive panel, Direct Current Talk, DC, Your Next Energy. And we will continue with applications sessions like DC Power Distribution Inside Buildings, DC electric vehicle charging infrastructures and protection strategies for energy storage systems. The day will be closed by the first product session called DC traction power supply applications. Now, let me share with you tomorrow's program. We will start an interesting application session called active DC microgrids in commercial buildings and public lighting in the Netherlands. Then we will have a deep dive into our products and solutions with high interruptive performances with demanding DC applications. A step up and switch to efficiency, DC contractors, the compact and efficient way of DC switching, and we will conclude the day with an interesting session about market and some real projects with how market is moving toward DC. Everything looks very exciting. 
the program will be duplicated. The morning sessions will be repeated in the afternoon to reach all the time zones around the world. The time schedule that you can find is in Central European time. To make the most of this summit, we strongly feel the need to give you place for interactions and the option to discuss some trends. Also, we would like to receive all your questions and to do that, in any session, we will have a live space created to discuss, comment, and for sure to answer to your questions or doubts. We also would like to collect your feedbacks about the event and other topics or applications that you would like that we go deeper. Therefore, we will be using a very easy platform called Slido. Slido allows you to submit your questions as well as upvote the questions of other participants that you find interesting. You will also be able to interact with us through online pools. Please take your mobile or any device during the event, you will find a red button to place all your questions and you can interact with our experts. Welcome everybody to this ICDC Direct Current, your next energy panel talk. Today, we have the special participation of representatives of the highest level of ABB, some of our best business partners, also representatives of the industry, and members of universities and very important energy research projects. All these gurus accepted our invitation to share with you their experiences around direct current solutions. We are here to talk about direct current solutions because it is extremely important for sustainability today more than ever due to all that we have seen around the world. We are not saying that this C will completely replace AC but a growing portion of electrical systems will be distributed in direct current. The idea for this panel and for our entire summit is to look together at the medium-term potential for direct current developments and trends. This will be an opportunity to interact openly about applications that could represent turning points for our work. If there is anything that you would like to explore more deeply, just let us know. Use the chat, place your questions, and we will be very happy to support. To begin with this panel talk, it's my pleasure to introduce our first special guest, Gian Piero Frisio. He is the global president of Smart Power Division in ABB. And during the last years, Gian Piero has been a powerful driving force behind so many advances in low voltage DC distribution, protection, and switching. A smart power division is also responsible for bringing the disruptive solid state circuit breaker technology to the market. Hello, Gian Piero. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure. Welcome to this panel talk. First of all, thank you, Vivian, for the invitation. And second, we are very, very happy to be able to reach such a wide number of people. 
bringing together customers and partners to discuss and reflect on direct current in distribution. One of the most interesting topics from the very birth of the electricity more than 100 years ago. Thank you so much, Gian Piero. Our next special guest is Frank Mulu, head of ABB's Global E-Mobility Infrastructure Solutions. Happy to see you again, Frank. It's a pleasure. Thanks to you, Vivian. It's a pleasure, as always. DC technology is at the heart of uh, what we do in uh, the e-mobility, in the EV charging. As you know, uh, e-mobility is on the rise. We see uh, numbers really going up year by year significantly, and we have an estimation of roughly 25% uh, of the new cars coming to the market um, will be electric vehicles by 2030, roughly. So we will see a steep increase. And to make that happen, it's important that uh, for the drivers, they have the opportunity and the chance to recharge their batteries quickly, also on the road. And to enable that DC technology uh, is really the center point, And that's where we have our strong point. Thank you so much, Frank. Our next guest is Chiara Gandolfi. She is the project manager DC transmission and distribution grid in REC. Ricerca sul sistema energetico, in English should be energetic system research. Chiara is part of RSE in charge to carry an important research project on electrical energy with a special focus on strategic national projects. Since 2008, RSE has been studying low voltage and direct current networks with interesting results that she will share with us today. It is a pleasure to have you here, Chiara. Welcome to this panel talk. Hi, Vivian. It's also a pleasure for me to be here. Yes, I'm Chiara Gandolfi. I'm an electric engineer and I work in RC since 2008. At the beginning, uh, I was a researcher for uh, power electronics and power quality in distribution grid. Right now, I am the project manager of the uh, public uh, national project uh, financed by the Fund for Electrical uh, System. And in particular, uh, RSC is a resource center and uh, is involved in a lot of national and international projects. Uh, the main frame of our project is uh, uh, to um, guarantee the integration of renewable in the grid so we can help to obtain the target for the decarbonization. And in particular, we have a system approach and we have also a um, different kind of uh, facility to test and validate our results. Uh, in RSC, we have uh, four departments. Uh, one for technology for transmission and distribution, one for power and material, one about sustainability, and one about uh, energetic system. Our next guest is Giuseppe Artizzo, Executive Director of Global Energy Markets and Development in NGEPS. NGEPS is an industrial player within NG Group. It focuses on energy storage systems, microgrids, and e-mobility, listed on the Paris regulated market since 2015, NGEPS started as a university spin-off and has grown to become one of the world's largest players in energy storage and electric mobility. This is a true DC success story. Thank you so much for being with us, Giuseppe. Welcome to this panel talk. Good morning. I'm Giuseppe Artizio and I run the Global Strategy and Business Development of NGPS. Uh, first, let me thank uh, ABB for inviting NGPS to this ICDC uh, summit. Uh, we see this as a fascinating opportunity to exchange uh, best practices uh, and opinions around uh, the emerging trend of DC within the energy transition. Who is NGPS? NGPS is the global unit within the NG Group dedicated to the development, uh, marketing, supply, installation, operation of energy storage system. More specifically, we deploy energy storage systems in uh, three uh, different business segments. Uh, our first business segment is Giga Storage. In Giga Storage, we deploy utility scale energy storage system either in co-location with, uh, with intermittent 
renewable energy generation sources like uh, solar wind, uh, or uh, on a, in a standalone fashion, uh, directly interconnected to the grid, in order to provide uh, ancillary services and flexibility to, uh, to the grid itself, both in high voltage and uh, medium voltage. Our second segment is industrial solutions. In industrial solutions, our storage systems are normally uh, co-located with the load in a microgrid configuration where we use storage in order to interface captive local uh, renewable generation uh, with the load. Uh, these systems can be interconnected or non-interconnected, so both isolated microgrids and grid-connected microgrids. Uh, these loads are normally industrial loads, even though we also look at uh, geographic, uh, geographic islands or uh, electric islands in, in non-interconnected uh, areas. Within industrial solution, we, only, we also include uh, energy storage system co-located with conventional power plant uh, designed to increase the flexibility and, and uh, uh, enable them uh, to better cope with the increasing need of ancillary services coming from the grid. The third vertical is what we call immobility. Within immobility, uh, we leverage our, our uh, capabilities developed for st stationary storage application in order to interface uh, the uh, increasing load coming from car charging uh, with uh, the constraints existing at uh, downstream of the of the grid, so in the distribution in the distribution grid. So uh, we develop a smart charging infrastructure able to allow uh, a smooth flow of electricity in and out of electric uh, car batteries, in also in people to grid or people to X uh, application. Uh, in order to transform uh, what would be a burden to the grid into actually a, a flexibility resource from the grid. So something that helps the grid instead of, instead of straining uh, the grid. Last but not least, our next special guest is the Professor Holger Bockerdin. He is the head of Power Electronics, Electrical Drives and EMC IFE in the Institute for Energy Research at the Host Westphalen Lipp University of Applied Science and Arts Department of Electrical Engineer and Computer Science. Professor Walker Dean is an eminent voice in DC developments. He is able to offer a double perspective with huge experience in academic research as well in putting direct knowledge in real projects. Thank you, Professor, for being with us and accept this invitation today. Hello, my name is Holger Borcherling. I'm Professor for Power Electronic, Electrical Drives and EMC at the Ostwestfalen University of Appliances and Arts. I lead here at the university a group of 20 researchers for the area or in the area of energy efficiency uh, power electronic, EMC behaviors of inverters, and integration of electronic, for example, into motors. One special uh, part of our uh, institute is this electronics factory. This is for production of our prototypes, and we are able to produce them in a few days and to test them in our facility here. Now that we know the diversity of knowledge and sectors and experiences that those gurus are bringing to this panel, let's start. Gian Piero, I would like to start with you. Why we are here today talking about direct current solutions? We are talking about direct current for two main reasons. This is a paradigm, paradigm shift and we need this kind of significant changes in order to reach the sustainability target of the world. This is a business and innovation opportunity, and we need to build some consensus about the way forward. Sustainability is more urgent and important than ever. The sea addresses some of the key issues that the integration of renewable and more energy efficient systems. The introduction of DC infrastructure could be the disrupted opportunity our industry needs to become really more sustainable. 
In 2020, the global direct current market is about uh, half a billion dollars, and ABB is the market leader in this market. All the forecasts indicate strong, fast growth over the next five years for this market, and ABB is confident, very confident about that. Gian Piero, I'm sure that the audience would like to understand better these concepts. Can you please give us a practical example? Yeah. Data center power consumption is growing a lot in the last years, consuming an estimated 1 to 4% of the world electricity supply. It is likely this year that the carbon footprint of data center will exceed that of the Ireland industry. You can imagine about that. Direct current power distribution can improve efficiency because you remove the conversion losses from the AC and the cooling load is also reduced. Estimates on the efficiency could vary, but um, a study done in 2006 by Lawrence Berkeley Lab using AC equipment showed that the direct current was 5 to 7% more efficient. On top of that, the direct current is also better in terms of material usage, requiring less copper for the comparable AC system. Thank you, Giampiero. Now, I would like to move to the research field experts. Chiara. In your opinion, what is the main driver for direct current solutions evolution? One of the main drivers for this evolution is the fact that a lot of loads are, uh, are now in DC. For example, the PC, the smartphone, the TV LED. So we have a lot of, uh, um, a lot of devices that now we have to charge in AC thanks to a co power converter. But uh, in this uh, way, we have uh, a big uh, loss of energy, so we can try to connect them directly to DC, so we can improve the efficiency, and we can also think to uh, develop USB-C grid, for example, at 100 watt, to connect, uh, as I said, PC, smartphone, and also uh, lighting, LED lighting, and so on. So, uh, a, a, um, if you think that the 50% of loads now are native in DC, you can uh, uh, easily understand why DC grid can be a good opportunity. Very clear, Chiara, thank you so much. Now, please let me tell you about other opportunities that I see in DC. Many of the technologies that will help industry and society to become more energy efficient and sustainable are using direct current solutions. There are growing applications in marine, building infrastructure, industry, DC microgrid, and energy storage systems. Renewables are a major driver in this with a compound annual growth of more than 6.5% while ESS has an expected compound annual growth of more than 20%. Demand for DC EV charging solutions will also go from a strength to a strength with compound annual growth of around 20%. So we can see all the opportunities in DC. Frank, E-mobility has been one of the most exciting developments for ABV over the last few years, thanks partly to Formula E. Being an active part of the global evolution in e-mobility and also being at the center of the green energy revolution, what does direct current mean for you? So your question, what does DC technology really means for us in, uh, in e-mobility. I think it's very important to understand that e-mobility uh, is all about reducing the carbon footprint and uh, to uh, have a clean environment and a clean nature. So in order to drive that, um, we have to understand that the battery technology is completely based on DC current. So the batteries, the lithium ion batteries are DC powered. So we have um, usually in the car a DC converter, AC to DC, uh, which over time will become smaller and smaller. So today we see like 11 kilowatt uh, or 7.6 kilowatt. In future, we might only see 3.6 kilowatt left in the car. 
only. So that means um, we really need to drive the charging and the conversion to happen outside of the vehicle, outside of the car, and that is happening with DC chargers. So uh, here in our DC charging portfolio, we have really a whole array of different chargers. So we start with small chargers like a um, 11 kilowatt wall box, even bi-directional. Uh, we have a 20 kilowatt wall box for short stops. We have our really bread and butter product, the 50 kilowatt Terra charger um, since many years and um, which enables a, a charge in like, like uh, 45 minutes, a decent charge. And then we have high power chargers on the highway up to 350 kilowatt with liquid cooled technology. And that is something where you really can charge up your car zero to 80% if the battery allows it in about 200 kilometers of range in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So that, that's really, really fast. Um, so, and then that's the future. And then of course, also for public transportation, like for buses, we go up to 600 kW or soon up to a megawatt of power. Um, needless to say, if we build up something like this, uh, it's not only about the charger, it's about the whole ecosystem we talk about. So it's a charger combined with uh, battery energy storage or um, renewable energy. And all of this, if you base it on, on a DC grid, uh, it can also be looked at a DC microgrid. can also be combined uh, in a home, in a residential use case, when uh, you have your own solar energy from the rooftop stored into a DC battery at home or the, use the car's battery uh, as well as a storage. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the, our smallest entry is the 11 kilowatt DC wall box, which is bi-directional, enables a bi-directional flow. So that means uh, we can easily um, power uh, also the home from the car, for example. So that's a great use case. Thank you, Frank, and also thanks to Gian Piero for sharing ABB's perspectives. Now, let's continue with Chiara from RSE. Chiara, can you please tell us briefly something about RSE and its activities focus on direct current solutions? Yes, in RSC we start to study about the direct current distribution grid in 2008. At the beginning we study only the low voltage direct current, while in the 2012 we start also to study the medium voltage direct current, because we think that uh, the DC grid is an opportunity to improve and to develop the distribution grid, to have a solution um, uh, with a high efficiency and also high controllability as we have in the transmission grid. In particular, in 2011, we start to build a microgrid in DC and thanks to this, uh, we can test uh, different kinds of control logic and control strategies to manage the system. And also it's possible to analyze the integration of different components, for example, generators, loads, uh, storage system, and different kind of uh, um, PV emulator. And um, at the end, uh, we, we are working about uh, also medium voltage direct current because as I said, we think that it's an opportunity for the distribution system operator to improve uh, their grid. Thanks, Chiara. I would like to ask more about your own DC research. How long have you been working on this data current project? Which evidence are you able to share at this point with the audience today? So in RSC, we start to study about the DC since 2008, thanks to the uh, project financed by the Fund for Electric System at national level. In particular, we start with the study of low voltage direct current and the opportunity that uh, we can have thanks to this kind of grid. The idea now is to compare the distribution grid as the transmission one. So as we have in the past the HVDC, now we can think about MVDC, that is medium voltage direct current, that can help to manage the grid so we can connect more renewable and thanks to the power converter used for the DC, we can have more controllability of the grid and also we can have more efficiency because we can avoid some um, conversion staging stages uh, because, for example, the renewable and storage system are native in DC. At the same time, in RSC, we are working also about standards. 
we understand that RSE puts its insights into experimental projects. For example, we know that you have been building up a DC microgrid demonstrator. Can you please tell us something about it, Chiara? Yes, so we, we built a DC microgrid in 2008 thanks to the project financed by the National Public Research into Electricity System. In particular, we have a grid at 380 volt. We have two power electronic converter, and so we have made a mesh between the AC grid that we have in RSC and the DC grid. This, this grid was born to test and to verify different kinds of control logic. So in our testbed, it's possible to develop algorithms and to test them into the power electronic converter that connect, for example, load and generators and the storage system. At the same time, we had the opportunity to evaluate how to manage the power flow control. And in this way, we have, uh, we have had the opportunity to uh, test really the, the benefit of DC that are the controllability and also the improve of efficiency because uh, renewable and uh, storage system um, born in DC, so we can connect directly them to the grid, reducing the conversion stages, and so we have test the possibility to reduce the losses and improve the efficiency. At the same time, we develop a prototype of uh, breakers and we had the possibility to test the behavior of the system in case of interruption and in case of fault. So we think that the test bed are uh, um, a good point to start to um, de develop the DC grid uh, also in the field real. Thank you so much, Chiara. That was impressive. Coming back to our professor Holger, we know that you are guiding the research in this field. Can you please tell us what do you think are the main technologies and application trends for data current solutions? My background are industrial inverters, for example, uh, for automation systems. In every of these inverters, there is a short DC grid, we named it DC link, and the voltage is uh, dependent to the rectified AC net. Uh, a three-phase three inverter has a DC link voltage near 600 volts. As 60 to 70 percent of the electrical energy in an automated production is consumed by the inverters and the motors which are driven from them, there was the idea to connect all of these internal DC link voltages to one DC grid. That's the main idea of the project DC industry. Thanks a lot, Professor. Now let's come back to the industry field. Giuseppe from InGPS, please tell us more about your company, how DC becomes the center of your business. Now, why is DC relevant for NGPS and in general for the, for the energy transition? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, an increasing portion of uh, the way in which we generate or manage uh, electricity is shifting to DC. Uh, solar energy generates in direct current. Uh, batteries charge and discharge in direct currents. We also uh, have capabilities in hydrogen-based storage. Now, electrolyzers absorb direct current. Fuel cells uh, give back uh, direct current. So, an increasing portion of the means by which we uh, generate and manage electricity work in direct current. It is just obvious to think how to leverage that in order to expand uh, the scope of direct current application and capture the benefits of direct current. Uh, from our perspective, uh, uh, the, the obvious and more imme most immediate trend is uh, uh, the increasing size and increasing use of, of batteries for time shifting energy from uh, the uh, hours of the day when ener energy is abundant, and typically the central part of the day when we can benefit from solar irradiation, to uh, hours of the day where the grid is not strained, and in particular in the, in, in the evening time peak. So we are rapidly uh, observing 
adoption of large-scale batteries in order to capture most of the solar generation during the day and, uh, and give it back in the evening. Uh, when we do this, uh, so we do uh, long full cycles of uh, charge and discharge, uh, in a system that is AC interconnected, we would have a double conversion, and this is a clear uh, loss of uh, efficiency. Uh, furthermore, uh, in AC interconnection, we directly interconnect in a, in a synchronous way the uh, solar generation, the intermittent generation, with the grid, and on the other hand, we have a, a parallel interconnection uh, for uh, the, storage, the storage capacity. Now, from a regulatory perspective, in a number of uh, circumstances, in particular in situation of weak grid, regulators and system operators do not particularly like that, and they'd rather see a single interconnection that is fully, that is fully dispatchable, so uh, a single uh, source, or, um, of, uh, source of energy or load uh, to, cope, uh, to cope with. So we see two main benefits uh, already now uh, in uh, DC adoption and uh, in particular in DC paralleling, paralleling of generation and renewable generation and uh, storage capacity in the fact that we avoid the double conversion and the, obvious, and the obvious loss of energy and second we give higher confidence to our counterparties, the, the system operators and uh, the regulator in seeing as something which is a single fully dispatched point of exchange of energy uh, with the grid uh, as opposed to having direct exposure uh, to the intermittency of uh, solar and wind energy. Beyond renewables, direct current is also starting to be used in buildings and infrastructure. Professor, let's come back to you a scientific director of the direct current project called DC Industry 2. Can you please share with us what are the objectives of this project? In cooperation with the Central Association of the Electrical Industry in Germany, we had to, the idea to build a very big research project in 2016. More than 30 players and big players of the electrical industry are part of this project. ABB is one of these big players in this project. Now we are in the fifth year of the project. We have made a lot of results. For example, we can reduce the power consumption of a factory uh, through the DC grid alone by 5%. If you can use the exchange of energy over the DC grid, for example, in case of recuperation of uh, some motors, then we can reduce it to up to 20%. On the other hand, you can reduce the amount of cabling by 40, sometimes 50%. In one our model plans, we could show that the maximum peak power which we need from the AC grids can be reduced by 80% by use of internal storage systems in the DC grid. We all know that to be able to spread a technology, all the proper standards and regulations for products and systems had to be in place. Chiara, you are also fully involved in standardization technical committees. From a regulatory point of view, what is the status? Which are the obstacles that we have to face today from your perspective? Yes, the, the standard activity starts in 2009. At international level, the International Electrotechnical Committee, that is ESC, start to, um, to develop different kind of working group to analyze uh, the business case for the market, the state of art, and also the barriers for the, for the development of DC grid. Right now, in 2016, uh, we, we start to work in a system committee about LVDC, but also to consider the electricity assets. And in Italy, the Comitato Elettrotecnico Italiano start with a technical committee, that is the number 320, uh, also to talk about these issues. 
RSC as the secretariat of this uh, technical committee and the main frame where the standardization is working is about the protection system. So the main important things is to have this grid um, safety for the devices, for the people and so on. So the main frame is uh, to evaluate how to connect to the ground all the devices how to manage and to select the default and um, obviously how to interrupt the current because as you know uh, the, main, uh, the main challenge of DC is uh, to have uh, switches and breakers able to interrupt the default current. So we think that the standardization has to work a lot but at international level to have the same frame and to have um, an equal and uh, uh, right distribution of the rule about DC. Chiara and Professor Holger, based on your experience, please tell us more about other applications where direct current is the recommended way to distribute energy and about DC benefits in general. What needs to be better and more widely understood by the people? So about, uh, if we talk about uh, LVDC, we can see that uh, this is the key point uh, to allow the electricity access because we have uh, over 1 billion people that right now are without electricity. So in a lot of uh, countries, for example, Africa and India, the low voltage DC micro grid is the opportunity to have this kind of electricity access. And this is why the standardization is very important. Thinking about the countries where we already have a good electrification and also we have a good power quality of supply, I think that DC is a good opportunity to improve the uh, capacity of the distribution grid. That is, we have to, um, to reach the target for decarbonization. So we need to in increase the percentage of penetration of renewable. And uh, thanks to the DC, we can, uh, we can manage the power flow, so we can have more controllability, so we can improve this kind of connection. So the main benefit, I think, is to have the flexibility and controllability and the opportunity to connect the renewable to um, achieve the target for decarbonization. At the moment, we see that not only greenfield applications for DC grids are possible, but also brownfield applications make sense. We see that the market of DC components will grow very fast. On the other hand, uh, often it is not possible to get serious components for a special case, but on the other hand, we have seen in our project that there are a lot of prototypes that we are able to build very big DC grids with all functions we need for this DC grid. Summing up, how optimistic should we be considering that we are moving in the right direction to realize the introduction of tidal current distribution systems? Um, yes, I think we are in a good direction because we have uh, standardization, we have research, we have industry and this kind of uh, event as, uh, as the ICDC event, I think it's a good opportunity to uh, make the idea that we are working together to guarantee a future for the DC grid. At the moment we are investigating a 2 megawatt DC grid for the air conditioning of a very big production hall for cars. On the roof of this production hall, there are several hundred square meters of solar cells with a complete power, uh, peak power of 1.4 megawatts. These solar cells are directly connected via DC-DC converters to the DC grid. With automotive industry as the driver in this area, we will succeed in, under, in other industrial areas like machinery buildings or process industry. Let's continue with a look to another application. Giuseppe, can you tell us about your project in more detail, please? And why direct current is being used also there? The uh, most obvious example of this, a practical example of this, is our project in the island of Guam, in the Pacific, where Angie has been uh, selected as preferred leader by the Guam Power Authority uh, to uh, serve 
through a 60, 50 megawatt uh, AC solar system backed by around 250 megawatt hour of storage capacity to serve a power purchase agreement designed to only deliver solar energy after sunset. So the entire uh, solar uh, energy production of the solar farm uh, is going to be charged into a large energy storage system and fully dispatched in, uh, during the evening peak time. Uh, we have uh, adopted and we were um, forced by the tender regulation to adopt a DC architecture because uh, the utility didn't want to have direct exposure to the intermittency of uh, renewable energy generation uh, in its operation. They only wanted to see the fully dispatched side of, 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 the, of, the, of this hybrid power gen generation system. This, therefore, they wanted to see connected uh, in AC uh, exclusive dispatchable, uh, dispatchable resources. Now, we think that this is part of an emerging trend. Maybe regulator, transmission system operator will become gradually more acquainted to the ability of storage to uh, stabilize renewables also in, uh, with, uh, with AC paralleling. But, uh, but in reality, in particular in weak grid environments, uh, this, is a key, this is a key requirement. Some fascinating insights there. Let's change the dynamic just for a moment. Can we quickly go around and in few words say why direct current is the recommended distribution solution in your applications? And what is the main advantage now and in the future for this? Chiara, let's start with you. The main advantage are flexibility and controllability. Now let's go with Gian Piero. Yeah, in, uh, in few words, I want to say that whenever there is a, a combination of solar panel, photovoltaic application and generation, battery storage and e-mobility, this is, is the DC is the right solution for distributing power. Now, and in the future, this year represents sustainability, energy efficiency, and for sure, smart power. Professor Holger. I believe that we are on the way to the DC factory, where all energy is exchanged via a DC grid. Giuseppe, your turn. In a nutshell, uh, DC current architecture is the natural companion uh, to renewable generation sources such as solar that generate energy in direct current and uh, electrochemical storage, battery-based storage, which charges and discharges in direct current. So we just see, just see an obvious fit between uh, uh, those uh, preeminent elements of the energy transition and a direct current architecture. And Frank, please. So in a few words, why direct current is the right technology in e-mobility, very simple, no direct current charging, no range in a decent time. So either direct current fast into the car or immobility will not make it forward. So it's absolutely an enabling technology. It's very good to see that there are very clear and common ideas about DC between our ABB experts, our business partners, also the representatives of the industry, academy and energy research projects. If we have some PV battery storage, e-mobility, direct current is the right solution for distributing power. It's clear for everybody now that direct current represents sustainability, energy efficiency, and smart power. Coming back to ABB experts, Gian Piero and Frank, the company clearly supports a wide range of DC applications. What are the investments planned for DC solutions in your areas and in your product groups? Yeah, thanks for this question. Uh, Smart Power is leading the development of high quality solutions for direct current power, pushing innovation to bring to market really breakthrough products that deliver more for our partners and our customers. Some of the milestones in our DC journey. In 2008, we launched the first fully integrated circuit breaker that embedded DC protection. In 2014, we introduced with the emergency trend for 1,500 volt DC system, the first low voltage hybrid molded case 
switch. In 2018, we launched the optimized two-pole DC switch disconnector for 1500 volt that is up to 30% uh, um, smaller than the previous, any previous version, and with up to 35% lower power losses. And it is particularly designed for photovoltaic application and energy storage system. In 2019, a new compact efficient contactor was launched for 1500 volts. This is bringing the possibility to have a bidirectional contactor in the first as the first in the world to meet the IC new dedicated solar power DC PV3 utilization category. And finally, in 2020, we introduced our revolutionary solid state circuit breaker concept for renewable energy storage and grid edge application. And here, because uh, it is very important because we enter in the digital age. And we are also working on the C switching solution about that. Today, ABB DC solution for solar, battery storage, and for DC microgrid, we are the leader in a DC motor for industrial application, in EV fast charging, and for hybrid and electrical marine application. We are working every day on new products and products and solutions for new applications. And in these two days, we will present to you the latest development and the solution we will introduce in the, into the market in the next future. We have improved our offering in terms of disconnector, switches, and contactors. And we are also starting a pilot uh, on our revolutionary solid state circuit breakers. So looking at the investments, um, very clearly, ABB is since the beginning of this industry a leader in technology and in, uh, as a supplier in this industry. So we are really at the forefront pioneering that technology. And therefore, we are constantly investing in it. Uh, we invested in that when we um, went out to, to buy a company called Epion in already in 2012 uh, or 2011, so um, close to 10 years ago, which is uh, back in the electromobility stone age. And uh, since then, we constantly invest in R&D, in production, and in new products, and in people. And um, so just to have a look at the, uh, at the latest investments, that's obviously um, the, the new products we launched, um, as well as investments in, um, in, uh, in new companies, like we have um, bought a majority share in Chargedot in China, just the beginning of this year. Um, and then to really enter the Chinese market and also the, um, uh, another segment there. Plus, we have just opened um, end of last year our new innovation lab in Delft on the uh, campus of Delft University, where we uh, are home to uh, hundreds of R&D engineers and uh, test facility really to uh, drive the innovation forward. And also, we are just about to build up a completely new, significantly enlarged uh, factory in uh, Valdano, in uh, Tuscany, in Italy, really where we can uh, have a much better output. And also, we put a um, facility there for testing again, for testing our equipment, power to power testing, etc. So all of that will support the uh, more than 17,000 uh, sold uh, chargers we have already out there, making us a, a market leader. And um, we, of course, will go significantly beyond that and continue investment. So this is a business which is set for growth, which means it's a business of constant investment. Chiara, in your opinion, what additional efforts are required to accelerate the spread of tighter current energy distribution? What should be the priorities? Where can we see the benefits? If you can please explain. I think that right now we have the technologies, we have a lot of studies. So I think that now we have to build some demonstration. Uh, we need demo with a high technological readiness level to improve the confidence with this kind of technology. So we, we have to demonstrate and to verify in the field test that this kind of grid are, are, um, can be managed easily and can give us a lot of benefit, as I said, to interconnect renewable storage and so on. But I think that we need to demonstrate this because for the DSO, uh, this can be an opportunity to evaluate the real benefit that they can have with uh, this grid. Giampiero and Frank, 
What do you get from the discussion? Let's start with Jean Piero. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us for this great event. This has been very informative and inspiring. There is a lot of work still to be done on direct current, but I think we all agree that the progress on this technology is more important than ever. I hope to see you all in person soon, and if you have any follow-up question, please, let's get in touch together. I'm hoping this will be the start of many, many more conversations. Thank you again. TC Direct Current is all about enabling e-mobility. E-mobility is all about a cleaner future and a sustainable future. And uh, I, I very much appreciate the exchange we have uh, amongst all of us, which uh, sees that uh, Direct Current is really the technology enabling lots of new technology fields and segments and uh, very happy to uh, have had this discussion. Thank you. Thank you for inviting uh, NGFS to this and we are, we are happy to take, uh, to take part in the debate. Thank you very much. Thank you Vivian for all your questions and thank you also for the opportunity to be here to talk about the strategic public research in Italy, not only about this grid but also about the energy electricity system. So we are now in the closing time for this panel. It has been very interesting for me and I hope also for all the people that is connected from different parts of the world. Thanks to our brilliant guests for their insights. Remember that we are all available to take any live questions or follow-ups, so please feel free to ask. This was just a starting. Let's continue and let's go deeper in the following sessions that we have prepared for you in this ICDC Summit. Make sure that you catch up the session how the market is growing towards DC. We will have the opportunity to go into more detail on some of our guest applications and find out even more. And now let's have a look what is happening in the technical corridor.